Hey, it's Random Code here, and today I want to showcase how we can create a MongoDB instance inside a Docker container. I would then go into this Docker container and showcase some basic MongoDB commands, which allow us to insert into some JSON stuff, extract from it, and so on. So, we just very simply here have a very, very simple Docker file, which mainly contains of from Mongo, which extracts a Mongo image from Docker Hub. In this case, I didn't add any text, so it's just going to be the latest and very simple Mongo setup. In a more real case, I would probably add a specific version. We then don't, in this case, have any environment variables, which could be set to define some passwords for a Mongo instance, but we're just going to keep it simple. And I just want to showcase that Mongo, by default, exposes port 27,017. So in a real setup, where we'd actually like to connect to our database, we would use this port. So now to actually start a Docker container, I am inside my terminal at the same position of my Docker file, as you can see here, which then allows me to very simply do Docker build, and we'll give it a tag, let's call it Mongo. And we're gonna be building it from our current position, which is connected to our Docker file. For me, it's gonna be very fast because I think it might already be cached because I already tried doing this a few times, but we can then do docker images, which now have a Mongo repository. To then run this image, I would simply do docker run Mongo. And it's then going to be printing a few setup informations to the screen. I would then very simply go into a second terminal where we would first check it actually is working and that this container is running. So let's do docker ps. Now see, we have a container running with an ID a few seconds ago. And as we defined, it's exposing this port. This isn't gonna be used, but we now have this running container. And I would then like to actually interact with the container to showcase it works and to showcase we actually have a Mongo instance running. So we would do Mongo, or not Mongo, we would do Docker, exec, dash, interact mode, then our container ID. And we can then define which files we would run from our Docker container, which in this case is gonna be slash bin slash bash, which allow us to get a bash terminal running inside our Docker container. So I can now do ls to see we inside Docker container. We have some basic setup with some dev files, some home, and a bunch of other stuff. But most interestingly, now if we do Mongo SH, we get a Mongo shell. And note, in newer version of Mongo, we're gonna be using Mongo SH. In older version, it's just gonna be Mongo. So the Mongo shell, it's a newer thing added in the later versions of Mongo. And because we're just using Mongo, it's gonna be the newest version. So we need to use Mongo SH. So we now is inside the Mongo DB instance. And I could then see here that right now we are pointing to a test database which i actually know doesn't contain anything so we could do show collections because in mongodb we have a hierarchy of databases which contains collections which is then going to be containing json information so our test which is where we're pointing right now actually doesn't contain any information but Test doesn't even contain or exist either. So we do show DPS, show all databases, which can say information. So we have admin, config, and local. And this is actually kind of interesting is that we only have things existing that contains information. But if I try to insert something into test, it's going to be created. So let's actually first just take a look at something that already exists. So I would use admin, for example. So we switch to TP admin. I can then once again do show collections. And inside admin, we'll then have a system.version collection. We could then do to actually showcase what's in here. We could do db, which is going to be pointing to our current database, in this case, admin, db.system.version.find. And note that find is actually a function we're calling on this instance. And this one is actually empty, so that one is actually kind of boring. Let's try another one. Let's try use local. 
to your collection, we have a startup lock. We can then do db dot start up lock dot find. And here we actually get a bunch of JSON information. And if we then wanted to create a new database and insert some information, we could use test once again. So use test. I still note the test doesn't exist, but let me showcase when we insert the into test, it's going to be created. So we have now connected to our test DB. Let's now insert something into test. So we we'll first do DB pointing at test. We then create a new collection inside test called people. And note once again, people is not already created, but when we insert something into people, it's going to be created. So db.people.insert. And we're going to be inserting something that's JSON. And let's just do a very simple person. So let's do name. Hans. He's going to be a bit older. So let's do age 50. And let's do an email as well. Of hands at email.com. So now we insert it into the collection. And note it's deprecated, so we should probably use something like insert one or insert many if we want to insert defining whether we're just inserting one, in this case, one person or one entry or multiple. But it has been acknowledged and we created and got an ID for this insert. So we can now do show dbs to showcase you already have I also have a test database but if we now do db dot people dot find we can now see that we have our json object containing our name our age and our email and we should also note that we now have an object id which was returned when we created our our hans our hans j object which could be useful in some real application where we insert something to a database, we then get an ID returned, which could then be used to update or change if we want to keep manipulating this object. But just very simply, we use insert, probably should use insert one. So let me actually just do it again to showcase that now we could just simply continue doing db.people.insert. And if we should actually try being a better person using the actually not deprecated functionality, we do insert insert one, and instead of just doing hands, we do hands two, and there we go. It has now been inserted, and we got an object ID once again as returned. And if we now do db .people .find, we can now see that we have two objects inside our db people collection. And note. That actually was a bit different from here, like normal SQL, that we haven't defined anything. It's just data, which also allows that we could actually insert and two once again. And we would now actually have two people with the exact same name, the exact same age, and the exact same email. But Mongo doesn't care because they are creating their own object IDs, which is going to be different each time. But that is the basic showcase of I want to showcase today in this video. I will probably create multiple videos in the future actually showcasing how we can connect different applications to this Mongo in this inner container to actually use it in a more real scenario. So if you enjoyed this quick showcase, please leave a like and subscribe and I wish you all a wonderful day.